Hello, you're watching Theater Tips and Tricks for Ministry. This year is our series finale, and we'll be wrapping up the techniques we've been teaching you through this whole series and describing the important balancing act that takes place in your head and in your heart as an acting ministry leader. Let's get started. Part one of this balancing act is the part of a mindset that's a performer and a teacher. When you think like a teacher in a classroom, you prepare a structured lesson plan with objectives you want your students to learn, and at the end, you have assessments to test how much they learned. When you go to actually teach it, you alter your tactics based on how well your students pick it up, and sometimes your plan changes completely. But because you came prepared with a plan, you can change your delivery to meet your students' needs. And at the same time, if you think like a performer, your objective is to entertain, inspire, and motivate your audience. This side of the balancing act focuses on the design of your message. When I first outline my sermon, I define the main point, the punchline you might call it, and the whole message stems from this. I've involved a skit, acting out the Bible passage as a sort of creative illustration. These are all structural things that help me stay focused on my main point. To achieve my objective, I have to make sure that my tactics involve speaking clearly and loudly, use proper lights and microphone techniques. If I can't be seen or heard, I'm not going to be very effective, but I'm going to pick up where I left off in tip number five. They've caught on that Jesus isn't just telling stories about sinners and outsiders. No. This story is more so about them. The older brother thinks he's right to be angry about the injustice he's witnessed. He stayed at home, he followed all the rules to be considered righteous and to please his father. But. His relationship with his father turns out to be more of a master-slave relationship than a father-son. He can't completely accept that his father welcomed back his brother, his father's other son, in spite of everything he'd done wrong. Pause right there. Now, let's look at the other side of our dual consciousness. The pastor and authentic human being that you are. There are no cookie-cutter tips and tricks for this one. If you feel called to work in any kind of ministry, you have to be led by your desire to serve God and use the gifts and skills that He's given you for His purpose. Yes, exactly. There's a great book called The Actor in You, and it says ultimately, acting requires internal transformation if it is to be believed. In the case of being a Christian, this process of being transformed is not something you can simply do for yourself. A good actor with a false message can win an audience over just as well as someone with pure motives. In 1 Corinthians 1 verse 17, the Apostle Paul says that Christ has called him to preach the good news and not with clever speech for fear that the cross of Christ would lose its power. By relying on God to equip you with everything you need, His Spirit does the work in and through you, and the Gospel speaks for itself. Yes, exactly. Let's watch as you wrap up your sermon, and you guys out there, be on the lookout for the tips and tricks you see him putting into action. Leading into this story, Jesus told two other parables in which there had been something lost. There was a desperate search for the lost one, and great rejoicing when the lost was found. This parable of the two lost sons is missing the search. It lacks a true elder brother to go out and search for the younger brother and bring him back at his own expense. In this parable that seemed to end without a punchline, Jesus has painted a picture of himself is our true elder brother. Amen! The whole point of this story is that forgiveness always involves a price. There is no way for the younger brother to return to the family unless the older brother bears the cost himself. Jesus became our true elder brother, dying on the cross in our place, and now brings us back into the family to be called sons and daughters of God once again. Will you pray with me? And that's a wrap. Here are some final thoughts as we bring our series to a close. This balancing act of performance and authenticity requires you to make many choices, just like an actor wears many hats. It takes commitment to staying in character, being aware of your audience, and having confidence in the gifts that God has given you. Just like a storyteller takes his or her audience on a journey, you will have the chance to do just that with any message you give. Remember, don't make assumptions about your audience. 
acknowledge that they are a wide variety on a spectrum of human experience. Sound, lights, and creative elements are reinforcements for the heart and soul of what you're already doing. You do not need a great budget to pull off an engaging, creative worship service. A ministry leader taking on an acting mindset is expected to be many things. Compelling, entertaining, skillful, relevant, and believable. Most of all, you should know that while we have provided this list of tips and tricks for your ministry as a resource, it's okay if not all of them work for you. The best learners don't copy word for word. They take the driving principles and apply them to what skills and setup God has given them. That's right. And in the description of each tips and tricks video, we have a list of resources that would be awesome if you want to check it out. And you can leave us comments and let us know what works for you and other helpful tips that you want to share. So that's all for now. Thank you for watching Theater Tips and Tricks for Ministry. Bye! See ya!